Hello and welcome to Issues and Answers. I'm your host for today, Geraldine Bissett Joseph. This is a production of the Government Information Service. Four Latin American and Caribbean countries were first to sign the Escuzu Agreement on access to information, public participation, and justice in environmental matters at the United Nations headquarters in New York last year. St. Lucia was one of the first countries to sign. To coincide with this, St. Lucia's first open data portal was launched during the same year. To tell us more about what this means to, to and for St. Lucia, I'm actually joined today by Ms. Tisha Jabatis, who is the MEA project coordinator at the Department um, of Sustainable Development, and Ms. Louise Mar Mathre Serrier, sorry, coordinator of the Open Data Central team at the Department of, Publ of Public Service. Thank you for joining me today, ladies. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Now, um, in my opening, I mentioned the Escazu Agreement. Can you just first, very briefly, just inform us of what exactly that is? Well, the Escazu Agreement, as you said, essentially states that at the national level, all individuals should have access to public information and given the opportunity to participate and to participate in um, issues concerning the environment, which is rel relevant for them okay. as an individual, as a, as a community. Okay. Now, as I also said, um, the agreement actually led to um, the opening of the, the open data um, program in St. Lucia. So tell us first, what is an open data prog program? What is open data? Um, actually, the, um, the agreement did not lead to it, mm -hmm. but it, um, it definitely they definitely related. Okay. And sometimes I joke and say that um, it was adopted <laughs> in Escazú on March 4th on International Open Data Day. Okay. So maybe it's not a coincidence. <laughs> okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe it is. Okay. Um, open data is essentially about the way in which data is shared. Mm -hmm. And it's about having technical and legal characteristics to ensure that the data is easy to reuse. And um, when data is e easy to reuse, mm -hmm. It has been shown to have a wealth of benefits, not just for those who use the data in the public and private sector, mm -hmm. but for the country at large in terms of improving productivity and efficiency. Okay. Um, when I speak of the technical characteristics, I'm speaking of data being in electronic format and easy to download mm -hmm. and easy to use on whichever software programs that the user has. Mm -hmm. And the legal characteristics means that the data has an open license and there are no legal restrictions to use of that data. Mm -hmm. And there is, there is no obligation for a person who uses the data to um, reimburse the um, original publisher of that data. And in our case, we're specifically speaking to data um, produced by the government, pub which is already in the public domain. Okay. So open data does not deal with or does not um, encourage the sharing of data that is going to infringe on a person's right to privacy. Mm -hmm. does not, it does not involve sharing private individuals' information mm -hmm. or any data that will um, be a security risk in terms of national security. Okay, yes. all right, brilliant. Mm -hmm. Now you were saying um, a while ago that it, it, it can, my, my, the, the open data portal um, being launched kind of coincided yeah. with the signing. So when mm -hmm. did work actually begin in, with St. Lucia actually open taking data. steps to yeah. have this program? It actually begin, began sorry, in um, the year 2014 okay. 14, um, mm -hmm. with the Open Data Readiness Assessment. And the Open, open Data Readiness Assessment included a series of consultations with um, public sector agencies, private sector agencies, mm -hmm. as well as civil society. And um, the Open Data Readiness Assessment was a collaboration between the government of St. Lucia and the World Bank, and it was funded by the um, by DFID UK mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what it found was that St. Lucia does have the capacity to carry out a successful open data program mm -hmm. 
um, we do have the human resources and most importantly there was a wealth of data being collected in the various government agencies mm -hmm. education data health data weather data mm -hmm. um, finance data which is very important in terms of public participation which Tisha mentioned mm -hmm. yeah. okay all right now you're the coordinator of the sorry the MEA project coordinator can you tell us what the MEA is first of all sure please? it's multilateral environmental agreements and okay. so what we essentially do, did was to develop a national environmental information system. Mm -hmm. One of the provisions of ESCAZU is actually to ensure that the country has one or more information systems readily available to allow the public and the private sector with access to information. Mm -hmm. And so with the NEIS, it was developed to specifically look at the multilateral environment environmental agreements mm -hmm. that we as a country have signed on to mm -hmm. and for the public who may not be aware that we have signed on to at least 20 environmental conventions oh, wow. yes and so we're now looking at essentially piloting three of the, the conventions mm -hmm. to see how well we can collect data original data mm -hmm. and new information on the environment particularly mm -hmm. looking at issues of climate change, biodiversity loss, and land desertification. Okay. And so we've, with, with collaboration with the public service mm -hmm. and other ent entities within the public and private sector, mm -hmm. we are able now to utilize data from the open data portal, mm -hmm. as well as other data provided from the private sector mm -hmm. to report in a more scientific way mm -hmm. when we, 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 we report on those conventions. Okay. Because signing is just one aspect, mm -hmm. but we need to report and to show trends, to show what is happening in terms of our biodiversity loss, mm -hmm. what are the different climatic variations happening. Mm -hmm. And so data, scientific information is very important to us ensuring we provide evidence-based information. Okay, yeah. all right. Now you touched on it a bit there, and yeah. I, I know um, Mrs. Seri actually touched on it as well, but can you more generally speak about overall what you believe the benefits of having such a system would be to St. Lucia? I believe that open data allows um, for an improved in efficiency, first of all, within government. Mm -hmm. And this is something that has been proven in countries that started their open data programs in the 90s, okay. um, like the, the UK, mm -hmm. um, they found that uh, so in case, some cases, as much as 80% um, of users were actually from within government. Oh. And so there's a need for persons um, carrying out um, research, mm -hmm. um, carrying out their day-to-day there's a need for them to know what other agencies are doing and to access that data mm -hmm. um, within seconds at some times when there are decisions to be made. Mm -hmm. right. So um, first and foremost, um, in terms of improving the public service and the service that they in turn deliver to, um, to the public, to clients out there, mm -hmm. then that would be first and foremost one of the benefits of open data. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, there are benefits such as um, when you think of data-driven enterprise businesses using this data mm -hmm. um, to make investment decisions mm -hmm. this is important both for local and foreign investors as well as marketing agencies mm -hmm. um, this is something that has been proven in research that was done by the Caribbean Open Institute in Jamaica mm -hmm. looking at how open data is really something that is demanded by mm -hmm. businesses particularly um, its potential to grow data-driven businesses in okay. the region. Mm -hmm. And then um, one that I, I think is very valuable in terms of the benefit of open data, benefits of open data is the potential to help make it easier for young entrepreneurs within the ICT sector mm -hmm. to um, develop applications. Okay. So um, with open data and the way in which the data is provided, it is of interest to um, what we call app developers. Mm -hmm. um, and there have been examples of app developers pulling open data to um, carry out very interest, interesting activities mm -hmm. or interesting um, programs or apps provide services. Okay. Um, well, actually, can I, I don't want to cut yes, you off. We'll yes. come straight back to it. <laughs> yes, yes. However, it's just time for a commercial break. Yes. We'll be back yeah. after this. Climat la terre a changé. Et ça a affecté nous toutes. Cyclone qui a venu plus mauvais. Gros l'eau et la pande l'eau. 
qu'a détruit les animaux avec plein. Quand la mer a été plus chaud, il qu'a tué place qui s'est pressé dans la gravité. La mer chaude qu'a aussi changé de manière de pressé qu'a quitté de l'un côté et qu'a allé à l'autre côté. Cette liste a contribué en petit et en gaz en l'espace. Quand un petit pays nous a essayé de faire tout ça, nous a fait pour assurer qu'il nous baisse à ce quantité de gaz nous a servi pour empêcher la terre à venir plus chaud. Et faut pour baisser à ce quantité de gaz nous a servi, c'est mitigation. Le climat a changé. Il a changé depuis que nous tout au niveau de la terre, car le gaz, l'huile et le charbon. Et ça, quand on est cause la terre à venir, on a changé plus chaud. Ça, nous ne pouvons faire tout le même, c'est pour adapter. Fait tout ça nous a fait pour préparer et répondre pour ces conséquences négatives à la cause des changements climat. Nous tous, ça fait quelque chose. Par exemple, nous n'y pouvons assurer qui nous protecter tout ça nous a planté. C'est vie fumier qui est naturel. Pratique quand nous pour abattre des mange en temps cyclone et godlo. Construire canal pour de l'eau courir bien quand il faut. Et assurer qui canal là par les ordi. Fait tout ça qui est possible pour vivre en temps changement climat ça. Trouver plus d'informations à ce plan d'adaptation national gouvernement et des marches ou même ça prend pour protéger corps et tout notre cétlicien. Thank you for staying with Issues and Answers. Today we are discussing open data. Now, before we went to the break, we were talking about um, the benefits of there being such a program in St. Lucia. So if you can carry on telling me about the benefits. I think from a global perspective, mm -hmm. um, countries with successful open data programs um, are viewed as um, countries which follow um, rules of good governance. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's also the benefit of allowing persons to um, have a better view of what government is doing by being able to access government data mm -hmm. allows for public participation. Okay, that's very important. And yeah. that is very important. Mm -hmm. um, citizens are able to give input based on real information, mm -hmm. not on opinions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And just to add to what Louise has said, it's actually very important on the national level in terms of how our policymakers make um, actually make decisions mm -hmm. because that that information and data actually helps guide um, future for example future climatic scenarios in Africa and Latin America mm -hmm. we saw them using open data to actually show trends in climate variations in oh. the in the countries mm -hmm. and that information is is very helpful when they seek funding from the international agencies mm -hmm. because they're not only able to provide anecdotal information but they provide evidence of the different variations and in terms of say in Lucia mm -hmm. um, what we've been doing is actually building our capacity within the public service and the private sector to help persons understand that data in itself is a tool that can be used to prov provide analysis and more visual representation of what is happening on the ground when you look at environmental trends right. and what is really impacting us and in St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. And so we have been training over 80 persons within the public sector and private sector in using data to do impact risk analysis, for example, mm -hmm. and understanding what environmental indicators are and how that can be utilized to make their work better mm -hmm. and also showing them how they can communicate it in a more visual way to the to the general public so that as a people we can understand mm -hmm. when we see the different trends in real time as Louis said mm -hmm. and you could see that over a million different uh, scenarios can be developed okay. you know with yeah. using meteorological data for example mm -hmm. so these types of assimilations are quite important to us understanding as a country as well as on a policy level brilliant brilliant now now something that both of you mentioned mm -hmm. was the the fact that how beneficial this will be for the different agencies within yes. the government that want to know get accurate information yeah. from other agencies mm -hmm. what other agency what other agencies that people um, that are involved in the open data um, program at the moment and, and like what kind of data can people actually derive from them? Currently, there are 15 agencies that have been registered on the Open Data Portal, mm -hmm. and um, they provide 39 different data sets, which in themselves would have data for various years on di different topics. Mm -hmm. um, in some cases, when we have data-heavy agencies, such as um, the NEIS, mm -hmm. we would provide a link to their database mm -hmm. and central statistics as well we would provide a link to their database mm -hmm. in terms of finance finance has um, some revenue and expenditure data up mm -hmm. all, well all, all of the revenue and expenditure data mm -hmm. education provides all of the data that um, that is in the educational digest on the website mm -hmm. there is um, 41 years of weather data on the on the on the open data website as well from mm -hmm. the met office mm -hmm. um, 
there, oh, I, I find it very impressive. There's 21 years of data from tourism. Tourism mm -hmm. was one of the early agencies that came on board with mm -hmm. open data and we've grown as we move on. Okay. We recently have NEMO data, um, information from NEMO. Mm -hmm. um, quite a few, <laughs> trying to ensure that I didn't leave any agencies out. Okay. Physical planning. Okay. I'm very impressed with the data in terms of geospatial data, being able to look okay. at um, locations of different mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. things, yes. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so it's All quite, right. a, it's quite a, a, a few data sets and it's mm -hmm. quite useful because we've mm -hmm. seen um, we had a recent set of user engagements mm -hmm. where um, there were boot camps where stu the students at the end had to create projects using mm -hmm. the data. Yes. And okay. what they proposed, the different projects they proposed were quite brilliant and insightful. And I'm hoping to see them come to fruition because I think they will become, be useful to St. Lucia. Brilliant. Yes. Yeah. Now you mentioned NEIS, yeah? Mm, yes. So what exactly is the NEIS? And yeah. what is the, how are they using open data? Or what, how, how are they well, benefiting from um, it? What within the Department of Sustainable Development, what we do is we really try to continue coordinating with agencies, particularly, you know, government agencies. Now, mm -hmm. the NEIS in itself is a National Environmental Information System. It's more or less, it's housed, it's, ca it, it's linked to the Open Data Portal. Mm -hmm. And with the NEIS, the public and agencies who sign on to a MOU mm -hmm. have access to all the indicators under the the three conventions which I mentioned earlier in terms of the Climate Change Convention, the Biodiversity Convention, and the Land Desertification Convention. Okay. So we have our negotiators going to the, on the international fora reporting on the status of the environment relating okay. to these conventions. However, sometimes they need on-hand information. You know, they need the data on hand. So right. we've built a system that they don't need to contact us. And sometimes, you know, time differences. They could go online. They could log on. They could access the information, the actual raw data. They mm -hmm. could actually show the visual in different graphical formats mm -hmm. of that information. Mm -hmm. Additionally, that information is re accessible to the reports that are being done under those conventions. Mm -hmm. So, for example, under biodiversity, we are currently collecting conducting the sixth national update report. Mm -hmm. And so in the past, it, there were many challenges to collecting data. Mm -hmm. Usually we would have to go to all the agencies in St. Lucia Wood to get that information. Now we have that information in one centralized system. Mm -hmm. And that information um, will assist the us to, to, to do this report in a more efficient and effective manner. Mm -hmm. So essentially, um, that system is to, to is a tool we use mm -hmm. to ensure that St. Lucia is reporting, again, not only anecdotal, but data that is current and also uses user's opportunity to see what are the new trends um, in terms of our environment in St. Lucia. Okay, now because you touched on something that I yes. was going to actually ask you, which was how was it before in regards to having to retrieve data um, between the agencies and such yes. like? Yes, um, in 2014, mm -hmm. an update on our national self-assessment, St. Lucia's national self-assessment identified that there were quite a bit of limitations mm -hmm. to re helping to us reporting on environmental agreements right. in terms of lack of data but what we understood that there is data available mm -hmm. in St. Lucia mm -hmm. but the issue was the coordination of data right. and so with the open data portal and with the NEIS we're now better able to coordinate and have access to information on hand mm -hmm. and it is very important you know for us as a country mm -hmm. being able to report mm -hmm. in an efficient way mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. also it, it now creates a culture in St. Lucia yeah. where people understand how data can be utilized and why it is important for us to have access to information. Okay brilliant. Yeah. Now it's time for us to have one more break so if you just bear with us we'll be right back. Bio means life. Biodiversity is a variety of life all around us. All plants, animals and microbes and the places where they live. We need to protect biodiversity so that we can continue to enjoy all the resources it provides. Fresh air, clean water, food, clothing, shelter and recreation. Biosafety ensures that we protect biodiversity against any negative impacts of GMOs while using it safely for national development. For more information on the Biosafety Project and how you can be involved, call 451-8746 or 722-9252. Log on to lc.biosafetyclearinghouse.net or join the mailing list slubiosafety at govt.lc. 
Welcome back to Issues and Answers. Our discussion today centers around open data, the Open Data Initiative, which is presently active in St. Lucia. Now, um, before we went to the break, we were talking about how hard it was to retrieve data yes. before. But what are the different components? I know it's not just a case of there's a portal where mm -hmm. people can go to get mm -hmm. open data. There's actually a whole program. So yes. just explain to me what the different components of the, the whole initiative are. What? With um, St. Lucia Open Data, mm -hmm. um, there are three components um, that would help to ensure that the the program achieves mm -hmm. all of the benefits of the the policy that the policy um, recommended. Right. Um, the first would be the Open Data Policy, mm -hmm. and we had a policy first approach with Open Data. Mm -hmm. um, the policy was approved in November 2017, mm -hmm. and it basically um, provided for a government, a government to have one approach to how open data, how data is shared within, mm -hmm. in terms of data that is already in the public domain mm -hmm. should be shared and made open by default. Mm -hmm. And it basically, open by default means that as opposed to um, I, me going to you and saying, can I have that data because so and so is the case. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be a case where you proactively share that data because it's already in the public domain. You've already published it in um, Digest. Why okay. not make it in a format that's easy for me to reuse? Mm -hmm. It's almost like making um, buying an expensive plate of food but mm -hmm. not eating it at all mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you cannot access it and use it as efficiently as you want to if you have to hold that book mm -hmm. and retype it mm -hmm. for hours until the sunrise. Yes. Okay. Um, so. The policy spoke to that, to having mm -hmm. a government-wide approach. And um, it's, it has been shown that having a, a sort of more um, senior level policy, or in the case of other countries, would have been decreased from mm -hmm. presidents and so on. This helps to drive an open data policy, and it helps to ensure that the public officers who become involved mm -hmm. understand that they have that um, framework that they're working within and the support from a more senior level. So the policy is one component. The mm -hmm. other component would be the open data portal, which actually is how we implement mm -hmm. um, some of what the policy is stating. Mm -hmm. And so that is data.govt.lc, mm -hmm. where you could go on there and you could search for the data sets that you want. You could also read data stories. Mm -hmm. um, in celebration of Open Data Day, we also had the um, the launching of an open data showcase. So the showcase is on that website mm -hmm. as well. Right. And it basically shows how different agencies use data mm -hmm. um, for research, both in the public and private sector. So mm -hmm. it has a series of features. Mm -hmm. um, and currently, you could also go and um, preview the data, visualize it if it's mm -hmm. map data on maps, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, the third component would be user engagement. Mm -hmm. This seeks to. Um, bring to light the, um, the fact that the policy doesn't just speak to sharing data, but it also speaks to encouraging the use of open data okay. in other sectors, other both the public sector and other sectors. Right. So the in, with in the vein of user engagement, we just completed a series of um, what we call open data meetups. Mm -hmm. Following the launch of the open data portal, which happened in June last year, mm -hmm. June 8th, um, we started what we had, what we call an, a data boot camp, which included persons from civil society, from the um, non-government non agencies, organizations, both public and private sector. And mm -hmm. um, we partnered with an organization called Slash Roots Foundation mm -hmm. from Jamaica mm -hmm. and um, Code for Africa. Mm -hmm. And they all came here and they trained them how to access free Mm -hmm. applications to actually analyze data mm -hmm. oh and wow. to use data to build applications. Mm -hmm. And um, this continued for the last um, five months. Mm -hmm. They would meet monthly to work on these projects. Mm -hmm. and, um, so that is part of user en engagement. Mm -hmm. And also for our data help, um, we, we um, communicate with persons who are working on various research projects mm -hmm. as well. Okay. So that would be the third component. There are also plans um, which we're very excited about to have a few application contests. So mm -hmm. that is, in, um, the ball is rolling on that. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a Facebook page, St. Lucia Open Data, that persons can go to to keep abreast of what's happening. Mm -hmm. We would announce any other events. Mm -hmm. And we also collaborate with the ICT Association on the meetups mm -hmm. and Imagine Solutions. And okay. uh, there's currently a website, mm -hmm. um, St. Lucia Open Community, 
I remember correctly, but I will post the website on the Facebook page mm -hmm. so that everybody mm -hmm. could see it. And all of the information that we used, all of the, um, the new s websites were introduced to, the new ap free applications were introduced to, the documents um, that they used during the meetups and the boot camp has been posted on that or as resources so that mm -hmm. persons could access it, those who missed out. Okay, brilliant. Now, one of the things I was going to ask, but you kind of answered it there, was what's next on the agenda for um, the, the initiative as it's taking place in, in St. Lucia. But you answered a lot of that here. So right. let me just ask you, Ms. Shabatis, what about for the NEIS? Is there anything that we should know about? Oh, yes. Um, there are quite a bit happening. Mm -hmm. um, again, with the, within the department, we believe that nothing is done in silos. Mm -hmm. So we believe in the coordination and collaboration with all agencies. So the NEIS has been developed. It also has a back-end access for all the agencies who mm -hmm. signed on to a common data storage facility, and that is where they go and actually input the relevant data for reporting on the MEAs. Okay. And so we've been training agencies as persons, as data contributors, mm -hmm. data administrators, to mm -hmm. ensure that they are able to to utilize it in and it's a very simple um, tool very accessible by anyone okay. so we're strengthening the agency's ability to input their own data while at, at the same time we're ensuring that the public is aware of that so we've been doing quite a number of public um, awareness campaigns and we mm -hmm. continue to collaborate with agencies who are doing their own campaigns. For example, we're working with um, the science and technology officer and the Ministry of Education. Mm -hmm. They'll be going out to do some information sessions in the different communities, mm -hmm. particularly looking at the sarcasm issue. Mm -hmm. So we're showing them how data on the portal can be utilized to actually show, to, to, to report on those issues. Additionally, we've been mainstreaming the NEIS into the different sectors mm -hmm. because we want them to understand that the NEIS has benefits, as um, Louise would have said, mm -hmm. in terms of persons from the international arena looking to do, conduct business in St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. So data can be utilized to, to, for them to see how well St. Lucia is doing. And so we're looking to show that agencies how they can use the data mm -hmm. to to show relevance for like for example impacts risk assessments mm -hmm. and il even for their policy making decisions mm -hmm. at the sectoral levels mm -hmm. so we'll, we'll be continuing those um, mainstreaming initiatives for the for, for this year mm -hmm. and also doing a communications um, strategy plan we have mm -hmm. developed and so we'll also be reaching out to the media to also inform them of the NEIS and try to um, have some discussions with the media and other entities to see how well we can inform the public of, of this system that can be utilized. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. Well, ladies, thank you so much for the discussion. We are actually out of time at the moment. However, <laughs> I'm very happy you came in because I, I had seen open data and even the portal advertised, but I didn't really know too much about mm, it. Yeah. So thank you very, very much for coming in and sharing with us. And thank, thank you, you for, for having us. <laughs> thank you for being a part of Issues and Answers. However, it's time for us to say bye-bye. So for us, from us here at NTN, bye for now.